first, if you can tell us about about William, about Zachariah, what do you want people to know about him? You want to go first? You want me to go first? You can go first this time. <laughs> sure. Um, so William was just always, always happy. He like never met a stranger. He made friends with everybody. Um, he was so smart and witty and always wanted to do his best. Um, super athletic, was always trying to be like the fastest. <laughs> um, and Zachariah was just uh, always following his brothers around. He was really starting to come into his personality, but uh, he was super persistent and smart and creative. Um, loved animals, loved being outside, loved just really trying to do everything that his brothers did. Um, we could say we could say he's got some some stubbornness there from from both sides. Uh, he he uh, inherited that fairly <laughs> from us. Um, but yeah, they're just both super funny, super loving and affectionate, and uh, just we're always really really fun to, to just be around and hang out with for sure. So. Um, yeah, they were just the perfect image uh, of love and respect, mm -hmm. and um, you know we we actually met in the church, and you know they grew up in the church, and so we were, you know. We were praying over him. They got to William was got to where he could read his own Bible, was saying his own prayers, like was going to class and amazing everybody uh, in class. And, and Zachariah was coming into like his own, you know, personality uh, as well. But yeah, just always full of light, full of joy, always giving people hugs. You know, always making sure people felt involved, included. Um, they were just really, really, uh, really special. And it's really amazing to see um, really this. A huge community of people from many places and many backgrounds like all come together um, it's just been really special to to see I, I saw the video you posted on your Facebook of your boys at the bus stop and it just seems that I just saw them hugging each other and it really would you say William and Zachariah did they have a special bond were all of your boys <laughs> particularly close with each other if you can um so yeah. they so we're a blended family so Seth was um hers originally um until I've, I've legally adopted him in the this past year and Logan was uh, mine originally we share him with his um, biological mom who's been amazing yeah. um, throughout this whole process yeah. uh, as well but these were our two uh kids like so that's what I think really hit us the hardest um, as far as coming to terms with this, coming to um, acceptance is, you know, those were, you know, gifts from God. They were gifts from God's for sure. And we know they're back with God now, but, you know, we were part of them coming into the world. And so I think that's definitely what hit the hardest. And so I would say of the four, they were probably the two that were, you know, the closest. Um, but they all were very close. But, yeah. gratefully that yeah. everybody was young enough as we were coming together that they were able to make their own like special connections as well yeah. so Seth loved them both very much Logan loved them both very much they loved Seth uh, they loved Logan so we got dog pile pictures we got mm -hmm. fun moments that you know we're going to be sharing yeah. um, in the future really cared a lot about each other but um, and yeah, Zach would walk into rooms and be like, Seth, Logan, William, Mom, Dad, Gigi, Granddad, I'll, I'll be right back or see you later. And so, yeah, he was coming into conversations and, and words and he was starting to tell us like, this is my friend. This is not my friend. You know, <laughs> William was like, hey, you're my friend. Let's go play. You know, so complete opposite of me, who's usually very like shy and introverted but I'm getting to be extroverted by nurture they were just extroverted by uh, by nature so yeah and they had they, their own their own personalities developing who they are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you've talked a lot about your faith is that what's really been getting you through these past two um, so I think spiritually um, yes as, as we feel like with our prayer time and we feel like we've heard some answered prayers that you know we know they're in heaven. We know they're going to see him again. But really, I think it's the ch all the ch our church, all the churches like praying for us, supporting us. It's all the different mm -hmm. us, and it's us hearing stories about like people either starting faith or coming back to faith. Or so it's kind of given us some purpose in the pain, and it's like, hey, we're hurting really badly, but. Like with the organ donation, for example, like if other people 
going to have miracles and, and answered prayers and um, it's still a lot to I think unfold uh, as well but I think the best way I can describe it is because of our employers because of the neighborhood because of the schools that we have been in a position to where all of our other needs have been met and met so abundantly that we haven't even had to worry about them and that's allowed us to just focus on the kids when they were in the hospital it's allowed us to focus on this party we got coming up you know on Saturday so yeah. it's, it's allowed yeah, us to it's allowed us to direct our energy towards you know what what matters like that other stuff is important but because of everybody's help it's all like fallen into place and it, and we'll get to it it's just but we we brought the boys in originally thinking you know the church was carrying them on the mat the four people but now we feel like the church and community is carrying us <laughs> like like because we feel sp physically dead in some sense but spiritually we feel like we're more alive uh, than ever and the community outpouring even looking at this memorial what's just been your reaction to the extent i mean i i checked the gofundme this morning it, it's over two hundred forty thousand. i understand mm -hmm. there's going to be meals delivered the church has been helping out so many people are, are touched by you and, and want to help what does that mean to you um, I, I think it means the, the world to us because I think initially we thought like, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 people would, yeah. you know, help us out. Or I remember Easter Sunday, we were like, we both invited 10 people up, maybe. And uh, it's just we've been thrust into this, you know, spotlight. We've been trusted with this, you know, responsibility. And we feel like we got to steward it well with, you know, God's help in the church to where, you know, others are still hurting too. And this is what it looks like when the church rallies around a family and that we should be able to do this for other families uh, as well. And so, yeah, we we intend as we're getting back on our feet and, and getting things sorted out, we're going to be able to bless others, you know, as well who are in the same hospital situations or tragic, you know, situations like with their house or losing a loved one or just something they didn't plan for or or expect. And, and you've been out here a few times mm -hmm. since everything. What strikes you coming back here today, knowing that you're going to, are, are you still planning to go inside in a few hours? Um, we are, but we don't know like what we're gonna find, you know, what we're gonna get, you know. There's some like personal information like for the boys and us, you know, we'd like to, you know, recover, but if we can't, we'll find other ways. To, to recover it so there's not really a whole lot I think we're going to be able to get so it really is a, a fresh start um, I think for us is you know we're just mad at the fire <laughs> and we're just mad at you know darkness um, and that we want to be able to shine a light of like hey even when tragedy happens we can still choose uh, a different response and this is the neighbors here you know they've put this together we didn't put this together and it's so special um, to us and we've had a neighbor down the street who's been willing to let our Seth our 13 year old come in and stay um, at different nights so that he and his son can walk uh, to school together in the morning um, these neighbors have been watching our dogs um, so the dogs have been okay um, Logan's mom has been doing a great job you know making sure he gets to school and stay in a routine while we're trying to figure this out um, our employers have been making sure we're covered and don't even have to worry about like coming back to work right away like no questions asked just like here's what you need we got you covered and I just I don't I don't even want to think where we would be without all this support um, and we didn't even ask for it our friend Brienne is the one who started the GoFundMe because we didn't even think to to start one but because donations were coming in so fast that allowed us to even get checked in you know to the hospital uh, but that we've then since been reimbursed due to our employers insurance and you know helping us out so it's been uh, nothing short of a miracle <laughs> like it's everything we were praying for beforehand it's just we kept saying under different circumstances this would be <coughs> excuse me I'm so sorry absolutely yes. amazing so we're the best way I can describe it is we're balancing the grieving as a normal parent with the, the spiritual, but then also as a proud dad 
of you know William making a heroic choice and you know we're thankful for the firefighters being brave enough to come in and, and tell us this story because we know how hard it is for firefighters to let alone go into a dangerous situation and, and many times they may or may not want to like visit the family or, or see the after effects but we're just grateful that the team was was willing to come in and talk to us so I think that's where we kind of got a spark of hope whether it went one way um, or another so it really was God answering our prayers through many different people um, they described the way they found them so they said the house was really dark but they said the only thing they could see was them and that they could see them clearly like they could see their clothes their their skin and um, they found William covering Zachariah like a shield and it moved them so much that they gave them uh, firefighter medallions and said they were firefighters uh, in the hospital and as a dad to hear your son being named you know a firefighter like that at, at six years old was just incredibly special and they gave one to Zachariah too um, at three years old and that was like whoa it was pretty intense um, Um, so it's on Saturday at 4 o'clock at Board of Life Church in Springfield. It seats 2,100 people, so everybody's absolutely welcome. Um, it's not formal, so please don't so show up in a suit and tie. It's really casual, you know, we're having a party. Um, you know, we know that they are full of life and energy and fun, and so we want to celebrate that for them. Um, you know, wear, you know, Bluey, Avengers, your favorite sports gear, um, any like Paw Patrol or anything like that so uh, really just gonna celebrate them and, and their legacy and um, all the amazing things that they they are and did they have a favorite I see I think I see a Superman <laughs> did they have um, either a favorite character or um, I know we talked a little bit about teens um, it, are there any messages about that you'd like to get across just to show a I little think bit yeah there. William was Sonic for sure yeah. like he absolutely loved Sonic um, I think Zachariah liked Sonic too but he was really getting into Paw Patrol and yeah. so he was watching the Paw Patrol movie on on but reach on repeat of, um, like superheroes or like Avengers I know William they liked was really Iron, into Black Panther yeah Black Panther Iron Man, Iron Man Captain America Zach really loves Spider-Man yeah yeah so and the Hulk <laughs> and the Hulk yeah, yeah Hulk smash so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he would say that he'd be like, Hulk smash yeah, both of them <laughs> Is there any message you'd like to get out to the community today? Um, just that we appreciate all the prayers. They're, they're certainly carrying us. Um, we appreciate the, the donations. Um, there's absolutely no pressure to give. If you feel led to give, great. Um, if not, we won't be uh, upset. But just know that you know we're, we're praying for people as we're being prayed for. And then as we're able to you know, gift others as we've been gifted, um, we'll be doing the same. And I think just also to say that, you know, God is real and we have hope. And I think that's how we've been able to respond to all of this with just a different uh, way of approaching things that we know that they're in heaven and we're going to see them again. And that, you know, it wasn't the, the miracle that we asked for, but we know that there are miracles being performed through them every day. Um, and again, just the biggest thank you to, to our entire support system, which is huge <laughs> so that's the biggest thing I think yeah and just we're not running away and uh, we'll still be around and you know we're, we're going to shine do our part in shining the light and making the world a better place so we're not going to retreat and, and cower mm -hmm. just remember their life was fun and they were all about parties and uh, just give your loved ones a hug and tell them you love them and tell them goodbye every morning don't, don't skip a day um because they could come back to bite you and then like like Raina said just just be prepared mm -hmm. best you can mm -hmm. so into others so that way when you're in trouble that they'll rally around you we still say we have four boys they're just you know two of them are waiting for us and we haven't taken out the car seats yet 
you know we pretend like they're still there you know we kind of still hear their their voices and noises a little bit so we're hoping that doesn't hoping that doesn't go away <laughs>